Hello there, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. We're gonna be getting ready together today, but I do have kind of a specific direction. I'm going towards a just kind of fresh, glowy makeup look, something that's appropriate for every day, nothing too dark and dramatic, and similar to the look that I was wearing when I did the video about my hair color. So I have a couple of new products today, but most everything else you've probably seen on here once or twice. And as we go along, I'll kind of be filling you in on some of my plans as we go forward into the new year. Now, before we jump into this, if you're new to my channel, I hope that you will consider hitting that subscribe button below. Give this video a thumbs up and and now let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a new eyeshadow primer. This is by Stila. I have not heard anybody talk about this yet. It's called the Perfect and Project Eyeshadow Primer and it's in the shade Nude, but as I recall, there was only one shade, I think, when I bought it. So it's in, with a doe foot applicator. You really have to be careful not to get too much. It's pretty liquidy. But what I do like about this, it does have really good stay power and it provides a little bit of a brightening effect on the eyes. Now, if you are deep skin tone, I don't know that this is going to work for you. Um, and I hope that they have another shade available, but if you are fair to medium skin tone, you can see there is some translucence to it but it really does a good job of kind of brightening the eye. It's not gonna cover everything. You can still see some of my veins, but it does help pop the eyeshadow. All right, while that sits on the eyes and before we do foundation, I am remembering to show you these again. If you didn't see my get ready with me a couple months ago where I used this, this is an eyebrow stencil. Now it comes with an elastic band that you put around your head, but I found it to be very tight and a little uncomfortable. So I've been experimenting with just a couple of pieces of scotch tape and I have found this to be so much easier and just allows me to place the stencil exactly where I want it to go. And then I can just gently tape it in place. And you know, you don't need it glued down. This, the goal is to kind of find the center point and help you apply your eyebrow pencil a little more evenly. So here we go. All right, and I'm going to use today the It Brow Power in Universal Taupe. And now this looks like a pretty broad space and I don't, you know, I don't want big old huge brows, but what's cool about this, when you set your pencil along the bottom, it doesn't fill in all the way down to the base there. So I'm just going to quickly just use, allow the guide to guide my pencil. And then on the top here, I'm not going to go all the way to the top of this stencil right here. So you kind of just have to play with these a little bit, find out what works best for you, what shape works best but these have been very fun. And if you struggle and have to draw on a whole brow, these are going to be, they're gonna save you so much time and frustration. Okay, so that's basically one done. And then what I like to do is I won't fill in like this whole area right here until after I remove it. Then I can kind of judge how much more pencil I need. Okay, now let's take this off. And you can kind of gently, just gently peel the scotch tape off. You don't want to use huge pieces of tape, just little bits. Um, but it's good to do it before foundation, obviously. So there we go. Okay, so this is how it is just pulled off. So then all I do is take the pencil and just finish off this inner part right here. And then I like to add just a touch more of an arch on this side here. Um, I have very uneven brows and this side really turns down. So I just like to add that little extra bit of an arch there. Okay, 
I know it looks pretty dramatic, but it's because we have no other makeup on. So um, I'm not gonna apply brow gel until I've done my foundation and powder and everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the eyes. Now, that eye look that I had in that video, I told some of you in the comment section, it was one of those that took like 15 shades to get it right. I had done my makeup earlier in the day and then filmed later and I didn't like things and I kept adding this and that. We're gonna simplify it. So the palette that I think encompasses most of the colors that I had on in that look is the Sydney Grace Enduring Love palette, but it doesn't have a matte brow bone highlight shade. So I'm gonna start off with this Wet n Wild shade in, what is it, Brulee or Creme Brulee. They have both names on the back. Always confused by that. So I'm using the Sigma E50 just to put this along the brow here. And if you put it right under the arch of the brow, it helps kind of add a little bit extra lift there. All right, so if you've not seen this palette, it's beautiful and overall much more cooler tone. So I'm gonna start off just with a little bit of Juliet. And by the way, the theme of this palette, Enduring Love, all of the shadows are famous couples in history um, that were famous for being in love. So we have Romeo and Juliet, we've got Ruth and Boaz, we have Darcy and Elizabeth. So, you know, just an added bonus to the wonderful textures of these eyeshadows. Then I'm going to go into a little bit of Darcy and just a touch of Elizabeth. Now this one has shimmer in it, so I am going to tap off my brush and with the very, very, very lightest pressure, I mean, you see where I'm holding my brush and don't grip your brush, just let the brush do the, the blending for you. And the mix of those two shades is just a really pretty, kind of warm pink color, a little warmer. It's gonna be overall cool look, but you know, I like to add that little bit of some warmth through the crease. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of depth on the outer corner. So I'm gonna use a mixture of these two shades. So this one is Passion and Boaz, and this is a deep dark charcoal. And then this has a little bit of some plum in there. So I'm going in with mostly passion and just a touch into Boaz. And I know many of you don't like doing this. That's okay, you can skip this. But by adding this depth here in the outer corner, if you don't bring it in too far, it just helps give a little more interest. And because I have hooded eyes, it kind of helps conceal the hood a little bit more. So, um, but I'm just using the BK Beauty 206 and just ever so lightly blending. These are really pigmented shadows, so you don't need much. And then just to help everything blend really well together, I'm staying with that same brush and adding a little bit of Darcy and Elizabeth and just really lightly going over the top part of that outer corner and blending onto the crease, just onto the lid, I should say, ever so lightly. Okay, now we're gonna add a little or a lot of shimmer to the lid and then we'll see if we need more depth or just to touch up the depth. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with Devotion. This is such a beautiful shade. Ooh, so metallic but I just love how much light this color brings to the eyes. It's so pretty, oh, love it. And then we're gonna add even more brightness with just a little bit of the shade, which is Romeo. And I'm just going right over the top of that and it adds even more brightness. All right, the lower lash line, I'm gonna use Urban Decay Mushroom. And I'm just going to, I just put this in the roots of my lashes more so than on my waterline, but I hold my um, lower lash line just away from my eye a little bit. 
just to help me get right into the roots of the lashes. And I'm gonna go about two thirds of the way across. And then I will smudge a little bit below the lashes as well. And then before that dries, I'm gonna take the Morphe M432 and just kind of work that into the lashes. This is a super soft brush. And so it won't irritate your eyes. You can just smudge that liner in. Makes it look a little softer. And then I will go and top it now with a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna start off first with the dark shade, which is Boaz, and then a little bit of passion. So first Boaz on the outer part, I'm going underneath the lashes, just pressing that in. And then wipe off the brush and go in with passion. And then why not? Let's just add a little bit of Albert. Albert has a little bit of shimmer. So we'll just bring a little light down here. And then one final step, I did it over here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of Boaz and I'm going to kind of give myself a little bit of a guide for my flick. Cause I'm going to now go in with liquid liner and I'm using the Maybelline Hyper Easy liner in pitch black. And we're just gonna do a real fine thin line along the lashes starting about uh well about two thirds of the way across and i'm just going right into the roots of the lashes first and then i am going to from the midpoint rather than following my eye down my eye shape i'm going to kind of pull it out just slightly to meet up with our little flick here And then after that has set, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of Boaz on the 207 from uh, BK Beauty. And I'm just going to put a little bit right in the corner. And that's just going to kind of soften kind of the edge where that liner ends. So it doesn't look quite as harsh. I mean, you're only seeing that when you look down, but I just like to do that little step just to kind of smoke it out a little bit. Now I'm cleaning up under the eyes with a little almond oil. Look at these darling little Q-tips. My cousin sent those to me. They're just from Walgreens, but they're so fun. Leopard print. Now, one of the most refreshing steps, if you saw my year-end favorites, you know I love this. This is the Stila One Step Correct and Conceal, no, Correcting and Brightening Serum. You only need a tiny bit, but man, does this feel good on tired eyes. This does a great job of just making your under eyes feel refreshed and it adds a little bit of color correcting. It's not as much as if you go in just with a full kind of opaque color corrector, but it helps. All right, for foundation, I chose the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better foundation, but it's obviously way too dark even for my neck. So I'm adding in a little bit of LA Girl. This is the foundation mixing pigment in white. The shade I have in the foundation is Medium Warm 32. It's a good shade in the summer for me. So um, I've mixed those two on my palette um, kind of just mix and add until I feel like it's about right. Um, we'll just put some of this on the face. I'm going to use the BK Beauty 101. I just washed all my brushes. Oh, I miss having these brushes around when they get dirty and oh, just, I don't know about you, but the end of December, things just got really busy and hectic and things like washing brushes get shoved to the back burner. <laughs> so happy to start off the new year though with all clean brushes. It's really nice. Okay. I had to add a little bit more of the foundation because I think I got it a little light, but, um, so speaking of new years, I am not typically one who makes new year's resolutions. I, um, years ago I used to, and you know how it is. 
couple weeks in, your whole list, you've broken your resolutions and you feel like a failure. <laughs> so what I've just started doing is I am more of a goal setter through the year. If there's something that I see I want to change, a habit I want to change, I'll just change it when I make that goal in the midpoint of the year. I don't wait for the first of the year for that to happen and I feel like that works better for me. But I did set a resolution for January, for the month of January, and that is I am not going to be buying any new makeup for the whole month of January. Ah! I know for some of you, you're like, what's the big deal? That's no problem. But if you're a makeup lover like I am, it's really hard. And especially, I mean, part of my job is, you know, keeping on top of new products for you all, reviewing them. So um, this month, I'm not going to be buying anything new. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to see new products because I got a number of wonderful things for Christmas, Christmas um, makeup for Christmas. Um, I also did purchase a few things after Christmas with Christmas money or things that I just saw on sale that I couldn't resist. So you'll see a few new things, but I'm really going to be focusing a lot of videos on just using what I have. So All right, so I'm gonna go in now with concealer. This is the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue in the shade 10 Light. And boy, do we now need to add some concealer. You can see that darkness, lack of sleep. <laughs> uh, we've had just a lot of different things going on, but also at nighttime where I live, there were a lot of people deciding to light off fireworks, turn up their stereos, you know, those kinds of things. And both of our dogs are um, afraid of the sound of fireworks. And so, yeah, we had some long nights this week. <laughs> All right, so I don't think I've ever used this brush to blend in my concealer, but I liked how it worked. Made that quick and easy. All right, now for contour. Again, I'm thinking kind of light and fresh, so I'm going to do one of the most natural contours, and that is with the Tarte Breezy um, Cream Contour, and it's in the shade Seychelles and this is the lightest one. I'm using a BK Beauty 107 brush. And again, another one of the products I talked about in my 2020 darlings. It's just so easy to use. And it really just blends with just a tapping motion. It's one that you don't have to like, you know, rub in and scrub off your foundation to get it to mesh with your skin. So that's why I love it. And then it's a, just a really nice, soft, cool tone, but it's not gray. So I feel like it really is, that's another thing that makes it real user-friendly. Adds a little bit of warmth, but it's not too warm, not too cool. It's just right. I always like to put a little bit under my chin here. Helps eliminate any chin fluff that we might have, right? Neck fluff. <laughs> With my finger, I'm just gonna add a little bit to the sides of the nose. And then just blend it out with a brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is just the easiest way to add some brightness to your face. Make you at least look more awake, right? <laughs> Even if you're not feeling it. Just going back one more time with my foundation brush just to press the foundation into my smile lines and wrinkles before I set it. And I'm gonna set it with the Becca Hydra Mist Powder. And I'm just gonna use the ColourPop Powder Puff to do that. 
Let's go in with blush next. I'm going to use the Wayne Goss Vivid Azalea. I'm using the E4 from Morphe. And now, if you didn't see me do this before, one tap in the brush, one tap on the back of my hand, and then I'm going to start about right here on the cheeks and just really lightly come forward. And then you can go back. So you just want to know exactly how much you're applying before you just go right into it. And I don't apply blush on the apples of my cheeks because if I smile and let go, you know, as you get older, things droop. But also I just have fuller cheeks and so I don't need to emphasize the front part of my cheek. So I just love putting the blush a little bit from kind of from the temple down and it just kind of helps with the process of contouring so you can use blush to help shape your cheeks as well i just think this is such a pretty color you just have to go in with a really light hand and then i'm going to go in with just a touch of this from thrive i haven't used this in a while it's rosy and I'm going to use the BK Beauty 104 brush or blush. Um, this is just a really beautiful kind of glowy pink shade. It's called a strobing blush and it is. I'm using this today instead of additional highlight. And I just think it really makes your cheeks just look really nice and healthy. So two final steps on the eyes before mascara. I already did it on this side, so I don't know if you can see. But this is something you can do if you feel like you want to soften your look kind of right at the end. You're like, oh, the shadow is just up a little too high. Go in with your brow bone highlight shade and just put a good bit of it right here under the front part and then just brush it down real lightly you don't want to totally cover up your crease colors but you see how it just really softened everything and it also helps with a final blend as well in our corner highlight we're going to go back to our palette to use a romeo putting a touch of that on my pinky here and this is just a great inner corner highlight shade. Next, I'm going to curl the lashes and apply mascara. I use the Origins Underwear for Lashes and It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara on the upper lashes. And then for its anti-smudge factor, I use the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions on the lower lashes. mascara sets before I clean up my little little goof ups that I have there I'm just going to kind of touch up this inner part of the brow and then add a little bit of the Thrive Cosmetics instant brow fix in the shade Audrey and I always clean the brush off so that there's just very little product on there and then lightly comb through the brows Okay, I just went around the edge of my lips with this MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. While that sets, I'm going to set the rest of my makeup with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is the only setting spray that I feel like really does something as far as longevity of wear, and it is a must if I am using this foundation in particular. So just a few spritzes. All right, now for lips, I am using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 2 Medium Lip Cheat. This is another one of the best of 2020 products for me. And then I'm gonna use a combination of two lipsticks rather than a lipstick and a gloss. I'm using first 
Max Soar Lipstick. They have Soar Lip Pencil, which has been in their line forever, but they came out with this lipstick. It's a really pretty berry shade. It is their matte formula. So on its own, this is so long wearing. Oh my goodness. And then over the top of that, just to tone it down a little bit, give it more of an everyday kind of look, I'm going to top it with Fabby. Look at how much is left. It's almost gone. All right, so here's our finished look. And I've just really been enjoying this type of look with that nice bright metallic shade across the lid. And then just that little hint of depth in the outer corner. Now, for those of you who say that is just not your cup of tea at all, stay tuned. I've got you covered. I've got a couple of tutorials coming up with no darkness out there at all. Hello, As so. I mentioned, I have a lot of fun videos planned for this month and just enjoying a lot of what I've already got. And then also just kind of giving you some extra tips and tricks along the way. I've got hair videos, all kinds of good stuff. Also, make sure you look out on the community tab here on YouTube because I'm going to be asking for your feedback of some different types of videos, what you want to see, which palettes you want to see, three looks from. So thank you as always so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out and I'll see you again soon. Bye!